You're talking about putting all this energy into a what we would call a dream, but not knowing at the level of ball that I wish I could play at, I don't even fit the matrix or the profile of the dream that I got in my head. Right. So John Maxwell says a dream is an inspiring picture of the future that energizes your mind, will, and emotions that will empower you to do everything you can to achieve it. Mm. But it has to be connected to your talents, your gifts, and your ability. Right. So the example I give, my dream college in high school was I wanted to play for the University of Notre Dame. Mm. But not understanding that that power five level, most safeties they recruit is 5'10 and taller. Mm. My idol safety was Jeff Burris. So while I'm watching, it's not registering based upon my maturity that Jeff Burris is six foot. Right. So if anybody don't know who Jeff Burris is, he played with Jerome Bettis okay. when he was at Notre Dame. Okay. So I'm 5'7", like hoping Lou Holtz would knock on my door. Right. But Lou Holtz is not knocking on, on my five, door seven doors. because it's a whole bunch of other safeties <laughs> that's 5'10 or tall. Not saying I don't, didn't have the athletic ability. Right. But the body uh, composition profile, that composition, didn't mix, I didn't match. have it for that level. Right. So there's a lot of student athletes who don't have the composition, body composition, for certain levels, but they putting their all into it. Right. Not knowing that when I graduate and I hit my senior year and there's no offers, because why? Only 2% get some form of dollars to play ball. You got to go transition. What's up, student athlete world? Lester Sanders here from Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And this is I Am Student Athlete. All right, Lester. So what is the number one challenge facing student athletes today? Number one challenge facing student athletes. Um, I will say that they are facing the same challenges that all other students are facing um, when it comes to identity, being able to be resilient mm -hmm. and um, having that work ethic to be able to play at the level of competition that they desire or that they talent and ability will allow them to play at. But outside of those three things, I think the biggest challenge student athletes face, especially high school student athletes, is that 98% of student athletes nationwide is going to have to go pro in something other than sports. Wow. So at the end of the day, wow. You can look at look at these stats on NCAA.org. Right. It's millions of student athletes, right. male and female. But only 2% is going to get some form of money. Wow. That's not even, I'm not talking about all full, full rides, rides. and all of that, right. D1 full rides. You're not saying that. We're talking about some when it comes money. to athletic dollars. Wow. Some of that 2% is going to get full rides. Some is going to get partial mm. and some is going to get like a little stipend. Right. <laughs> and so when you've done something for so many years, connecting back to identity, if I am a person, in addition to my first and last name, now I identify as a student athlete. Mm -hmm. Now I have to figure out or along my student athlete journey, I got to begin to start preparing for life without the ball in my hand. Wow. Because if I don't, I'll be stuck being a student athlete and the sport is gone. That's tough. So, you know, I just give a real life example. I was one of them kids mm -hmm. who growing up in Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Right. I'm playing youth football, middle school. My goal was I'm trying to play in Fawcett Stadium mm -hmm. and I'm trying to be a starter on the Camp McKinley football team. Right. And so, 
you know, when I've looked at trying to navigate the obstacles and hurdles of growing up in the hood, I'm like, I'm going to be a student athlete. Mm -hmm. So look at all the stock that I'm putting into being this student athlete. But the problem becomes you turn ten, turn a 10th grader, you're a strong safety starting on the sophomore team, but you're only 5'7". Mm, this is you. This is me. Okay. I'm only 5'7", starting as a sophomore wow. in the sophomore games. So because back then you had a freshman team, sophomore, JV, and then you had varsity. Oh, okay. So I was dressing varsity, but I didn't play a, a down. But the reps – I got in my sophomore games. So you're talking about putting all this energy into a what we would call a dream, but not knowing at the level of ball that I wish I could play at, I don't even fit the matrix or the profile of the dream that I got in my head. Right. So John Maxwell says a dream is an inspiring picture of the future that energize your mind, will, and emotions that will empower you to do everything you can to achieve it. Mm. But it has to be connected to your talents, your gifts, and your ability. Right. So the example I give, my dream college in high school was I wanted to play for the University of Notre Dame. Mm. But not understanding that that Power 5 level, most safeties they recruit is 5'10 and taller. Mm. My idol safety was Jeff Burris. So while I'm watching, it's not registering based upon my maturity that Jeff Burris is six foot. Right. So if anybody don't know who Jeff Burris is, he played with Jerome Bettis. Okay. When he was at Notre Dame. Okay. So I'm five seven, like hoping Lou Holtz would knock on my door. Right. But Lou Holtz is not knocking on, on my five, door. Seven doors. Because it's a whole bunch of <laughs> other safeties that's five ten or tall. Not saying I don't, didn't have the athletic ability. Right. But the body. Uh, composition profile, that just composition didn't mix, I didn't, didn't have it for that level. Right. So there's a lot of student athletes who don't have the composition, body composition, for certain levels, but they putting their all into it. Right. Not knowing that when I graduate and I hit my senior year and there's no offers, because why? Only 2% get some form of dollars to play ball. You got to go transition. Man, I didn't hear people say I done lost my faith in God because wow. I'm not playing sports no more. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've done this my whole life. So part of that identity is like if you identify partially as an athlete, you got to find out who you are professionally. Mm. And there's a way that you even could be still connected in sports. That's a whole nother okay. topic. Right, right. As far as within sports, but you may not be that, that athlete. And so – not knowing what to do and having no research on what to do, man, that's a challenge. Right. Um, and just being able to transition at any moment, especially for sports like football, you could get hurt, career-ending injury at any moment. And not not life threatening, just yeah. career in football career ending. Yeah. Not full career ending. You can go on and be a million different Profession, you could go into a many different professions, yep. but not a, not an athletic sport, not something as physical as yeah. football. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at other sports. Some people's body endure. You look at LeBron James. Right. He was blessed to have a body that had endured. But right. how many guys only played two, three years in the league and their body just was done? I'm they thinking still, like, like Greg Oden. Right. It's some people that because of that size and that body composition, their body don't hold up. Right. So it's just one of them things. You got to be ready to transition at any time. And that's a message that we got to do simultaneously while going hard in your sport. Yeah. Because you everybody's not going to go power five D1. Somebody might go mid-level D1, lower level D1. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of great football being played at Division Two, Right. And at Division Three, Right. But you got to be able to w be willing to transition because – Everybody's may not go to the next level. And then we just talked about college. Now that percentage gets smaller when you talk about mm, going to the pros. To actually, right. This is a, a huge challenge. So what this makes me think of is when in the world do we start talking to these young people? Because most of us know or remember when our young people didn't even necessarily want to go to practice, right? Right. So we fussing at them. Get your get your jersey. Get your shoes. Get your <laughs> you got to round them up and everything. Yeah. You got to round them up. So in a sense, their greatest influence is their parents. Mm -hmm. 
for most of them, you're the one who started me on this road. I didn't identify as a student. I went to school because I had to. Mm-hmm. M- many people. Some, yeah. some do identify as a student. School is something I tolerate, I deal with because it's a part of our system and I have to go. Mm-hmm. Sports is something I have a love for. But even on the days when I don't, you push me and encourage me to go. Sure. I don't see my parents clapping and standing and celebrating when I answer, when I do well on a spelling test yeah. or when I get to middle school and I do well reading that book in English or yeah. when I get to high school yeah, and stuff. I pass uh, calculus or something crazy. Mm-hmm. Nobody's standing there cheering. Yeah. But in this place, right. on this field, on this court, on this grass, turf, uh, physical basketball court, volleyball court, sure. tennis, whatever, I'm seeing the people I love the most stand and cheer for me in a way that they never do. So when you talk about your, your if if I get my identity from these people, and then the only place I see them all come out, the whole family and everybody celebrating and screaming, screaming as and well hollering. as the whole community, yeah. how in the world can I not make that my identity and think this is who I am? What do I do with that? And and I think that that w- what you just said, you gave the scenario of how someone can turn eighteen and say. What's next? Right. Because all of those factors, because there was a lot more noise on the yes. athletic end versus the academic. 100%. Or the civic engagement end. So what we got to do better as parents, coaches, mentors, community people, we got to have that balanced message and actually give equal praise mm, we gotta make some noise. across the board. We got to make some noise okay. for the classroom. Yes. We got to make some noise for character. Right. We got to make some noise for doing the right thing. Yeah. And then when it's balanced out, there's a balance. And, and then we give this balanced message of throughout the years, hey, I know you're a student athlete, but we got to look at career paths. Yeah. Because even if a, even if a student athlete was to go – get a scholarship or go pro, they can't play forever. Right. Everybody not going to be Tom Brady and play till they 40, almost 44, right. 45. If you make it, if you're playing professional sports till you're 30 or early thirties, you've had a long career and you're very young. Yeah. And so then that's over. I, so so no matter what, over. you got to have life after sport. Absolutely. I've never seen a 55 year old tailback. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to see a 35 year old way. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so at the end of the day, I think it boils down to planting the seeds of a balanced message so that when the transition takes place, it's not foreign to them. Love it. The ones that I see struggle the most is it was an imbalance. Like you look at scales, the, the being a student athlete was the scale tipped down here. Mm hmm. Everything else that I should be was up here. Right. But if they balance equal, go hard at the sport because there's transferable skills that no matter when the sport ends, I can put it over here in the game of life. Right. And so if that message is balanced, yeah, it's going to be a transition because anything that you stop doing, it could be a level of transition or grief from what you were doing. Right. Right. But somebody won't go to a black hole or dark space because this has ended. Because on our life journey, there's multiple things that's going to open up and come to a close. Right. So we just got to do a better message, messaging across the board with that with student athletes. Love it. 